G'day, I'm Al McGlashan, and here's my top 10 tips for offshore trolling. In part one, we covered the first five tips of offshore trolling. Tip one, being prepared. Tip two, making a plan. Tip three, go early and make a day of it. Tip four, look for the signs. And tip five, trolling speeds. So now, let's get straight into part two. Number six, the spread. I'll tell you what, if there's one thing that will start a fight, it's what lures to run, where to run them. There's so much science into this. But you know what? I keep it simple. First thing, turn down your radio, because we are listening to radio to see if anyone else is getting by anywhere, is that don't run too many rods in my view. If you're chasing blue marlin, or big tuna, if you put too much gear out, you've got to wind that gear in while that fish is screaming up. So for me today, we've got four rods out, because there's only three of us on board, and all is on the camera. So, what have we got out in the spread? So we're primarily ch chasing tuna today. So we've got a Alco Max right out the back. That one will be the most effective. Shotgun, I don't run a shotgun as such. We just put the rod up in the rocket launcher and let it sit there, put the drag down a bit. And that is set well, well back in the spread. On the short and long riggers, we're running skirts. So one small skirt because the bluefin always seem to like skirts. You also want to run Sandals Pro Squidgies, which are really good, particularly for yellowfin. Oh, there's something marking down there. Not a super good mark, might be a bit of bait. Good interruptions when it's a real interruption like that. So we've been running the larger sort of 12 inch, 10 to 12 inch skirts because the last couple of seasons the bluefin have favoured those. And at the moment we're chasing yellowfin and bluefin and albacore. Oh, nice one here. Woohoo! Nice fish. Very rare for a marlin this time. When we did the last one, or the last video, was when there were a lot more marlin there as well, so we, we'd mix it up a bit. But this time of year, you're doing a lot more tuna. But this style of spread works for both. If you want to run a fifth lure, a laser pro in short underneath the prop wash can... <laughs> Sorry, I That's all right. If you want to run... Sorry, we're just laughing because all it sneezed. And now I'm going to... <laughs> Yeah, you started it. It's the sun. Oh, oh I'm going to sneeze again. And <laughs> shoo! Oh. So now if you want to run a fifth lure, just run a laser probe, sort of, you know, one of the crazy deeps down the side here, down the side of the prop wash. But as I said, we prefer not to run too many rods. It just creates tangles. Because the other thing too, if we catch a, we get a patch of tuna on the top or see a blue marlin. I want to do tight turns. If I've got gear too far out and too much gear in, I'm going to get tangled. So keep it simple and then I can cut round quickly in front of them and stuff. So it's really important that side. Uh, what else is there with the lures? That's pretty much it. We really stagger them out so to minimise tangling. And you always set your spread, and this is a really important note, from the back. So always start right at the back. So do your shotgun first and then work your way forward. If we had a bigger boat, and a wider boat, we can run more rods and more crew, but don't do it if you haven't got enough crew. Also, on the same note, a lot of guys run tees and stuff. I don't run them a lot. When I'm live baiting for marlin, I do a bit. Occasionally when I'm teasing. I haven't had a lot of success with it, but a lot of other guys have. So the important thing to take in there is the fact that it can work. It's just experiment and try if it suits you. If we're marlin fishing, teasers definitely seem to work. For tuna, Spreader bars can work in some areas, particularly down south with the guys chasing bluefin, but up here, it doesn't seem to work as well. But remember, every area is different, so experiment. Number seven, and this is one of my favorites, use the technology. Now, we spoke about using the SST charts before you go out, and also the weather apps too, I should add. Yeah, use them, work out which way, and this goes back to your planning earlier on. If you look at it, so say for example today, we've got a it's going to be calm in the morning, we're going to have a hard subtle in the afternoon. You can already feel a bit of it there now. So what that means is it really restricts us, is that we've got to fish to the south. If we go to the north, we're going to have to punch into it. So before you even go to sea, you've looked at all the weather reports, you've worked out what the weather's doing to the best of your you know, ability, 
and then you're going to plan your day around it. So we're going to go to the south, fish down here, use the charts to find the best water down here, and then we're going to fish back up with the weather so we get at least a half decent run home. While we're on the water, we're going to use every bit of technology we've got. Starting with the sounder, so we've got a 295 there, we're running the wide SS175 wide, so that's capturing out, I think, 20 degrees below us there now. And what we're doing with that is we've got it set in 60 fathoms, or 70 fathoms actually, and even though we're in 800, 900 fathoms, we're only looking at the top part. And we're only looking there because that's where the tuna are going to be, that we're going to mark them at this speed. If they're down deep, we're not going to see them. Or marlin, you'll see a lot of marlin doing this as well. So we mark, you know, if we mark a fish, we'll turn around and go on it. And I guarantee sometimes when you go back around, you'll get a bite. So don't don't just do it once and go, oh, that's it. Go around a couple of times, zig round, zigzag and all that. Just keep doing it and see. We're actually running multiple sounders. So here on the GPS, on the um, the touch, TZ touch, we're at the moment I'm running on the screen, but I've got the radar going full blast in bird mode. So what that means is I'm looking with my radar for birds. This is really vital. And to be honest, it's a new part for us. Because the radar we're running is a big mother, I'm telling you. This, we could take off with this thing on here. And it's something new, but we did those standard little dome ones. They weren't really that effective. I keep looking across the sound, that's why I'm not looking at the screen. I keep looking across. They weren't really that effective for us. So for me, it's a lot more about using a bigger radar to find those birds. Because if there's a bird patch over there four miles, we can't see it but we can get it on here, it means I can go to it. And one thing that's really important there is to understand is our technology is screaming forward. So we're getting, there's less fish in the ocean, we're getting better at catching them. So that's why our catch rates stay the same. So yeah, so we've got the 295 run there. We've got an 82B, which is for um, deep water for sword fishing. So I've turned that off. I'm running the, the shallow water, got that wide. We've also got down here, you can see the bird mode running on here and of course on GPS and with all my different marks. Of course you have tracking on so you can see where you were. So if you mark something, you can turn around and go back to it and you can see there's certain points there where I've seen something driven around and back to it, had a look again. We also run in here, I run a second transducer through here, but I've also got their wasp. And what the wasp does, it's a wide angle to give us the 3D. So it's actually searching out the side of the boats here left and right, inning up to sort of 50 metres a side. So it's effectively running like a sonar around the boat and giving me, you know, a much greater search area. It's these little things that play a big role. On top of that, autopilot. Autopilot is awesome, not just because like now we're heading down through this water, because I'm going in a straight line, but anyway, is that if we see birds or we see something, okay, so Cooper's there and he goes, oh, I'm pretty sure I saw birds up there because they can be hard to see. What we do is we point the boat directly where he said, press go, because otherwise you'll go, yeah, it was over there, and it moves. So autopilot can get you right back, and as you're getting closer, at least you know you're going straight for it. Of course, just going finally, the, the final thing we're using with the tech here is just using the Mercury Smart Gauge, which is really simple, and it's really important because you know what it does? We're managing our fuel. So we're running at 9.1 litres at the moment for about five, six, uh, six knots. So probably punch you up a little bit there. So we're using that. So I know that I've used about 120 litres today running out, you know, 35 miles. While that's not actually helping you catch fish, it is vital for getting you out to the grounds and getting you back safely. So if you don't know how to use all these GPSs and radars and sounders, they're completely useless. So learn to use it, like I love my Furuno, but whatever you got, learn to use it, learn to interpret the picture so you can get a good, you know, a good data on there. And I suppose just one point there that's really vital is that you don't want a really clean screen. A dirty screen has more data in it. So more data or more information means there's more for you to interpret. And a fish might be that little bit hard to see, so you can turn your gain up a bit and see it. So so everything's variable. Keep changing it to suit the conditions, and these electronics will catch you more fish. Number eight, the bite. Now, the first thing, if you see tuna blowing up or birds, you know, you get excited, 
what everyone does is they chase them. Don't chase them, get around in front of them because the birds are there, the fish are there. You want to be in front and get your lures in front. You don't want your boat there, you want your lures there. So you want to get around in front of them. So when you see them, try and work out which way they're going and get your gear around in front of them. As soon as you do that, you'll get a bite. Also, if you have a fish up, so particularly for marlin, if we see a marlin up in the spread there and he drops down out of the way and he's on a lure, turn the boat left or right. And what that will do will give you a nice clear window on the edge of the wake so you can see. And all of a sudden they'll give you a great field of view that you'll be able to see that fish. If you're running into the weather, same thing. Turn side on to stop the boat banging if there's a fish there to give you a better, better shot at them. So it's simple things like this. Again, don't just go in a straight line. Turn to maximise on the situation as much as you can. If you do, or when you get that bite, do not stop. Everyone pulls up and goes, I oh, run. <laughs> Keep the boat going forward. So there's two parts to this. One, if, it's, if you're chasing big 150 kilo bluefin, get the gear in as quick as you can to fight that fish. Same with a big blue marlin. So with with big fish, you've got to be serious about it. But still keep the boat going forward. If they're smaller fish or you want multiple hookups, keep the boat going forward and keep the gear in as long as you can, as long as practical without tangling up that fish. So if he's screaming, like a blue marlin can be hard because they turn around and charge the boat and stuff. But normally with tuna, they scream off the opposite direction. So unless you're going to get in trouble with like losing, the, you know, getting spooled, you can usually let that fish go long enough to get a second or third fish on because the activity of that fish getting excited and smashing lure has got all these mates fired up. So they all come race it up to check out what's going on. So you've got to be really on your money with that sort of side. And this where it goes back to your planning with the crew that you've got. You've got everyone has set roles. You want everyone to know what they're doing. So Rod doesn't go off and everyone stands there and goes, oh, was it yours? Was it yours? It's like, you're on the rod, I'm winding up the gear, I'm on the wheel, whatever it is. So make sure everyone has a role to play. So that when you get that bite, you maximize every time. Of course, going back to, and there's a lot of going back on the other points. When you were checking all those lures this morning, when you were setting them out, of course, you made sure every hook was razor sharp. So each opportunity you get, you can pin that fish and turn it into a, turn it into capture or a tag and release. Number nine. Now this is a really obvious one is Keep searching and don't stop looking. Don't fall asleep, uh -huh. like some or others. Keep searching because there might be a splash over there, you know. I know during the day you get more tired, you know, everyone's like, oh, this is just boring. But what if a patch of tuna blew up over there? You don't see it. Classic example of this. So we're fishing up Port Macquarie for the Golden Lure years and years ago, up on the north coast of New South Wales. Everyone's fast asleep, it's oily calm, it's like, oh, this is crap. And I saw one turn flying around like that, swinging around, I went, oh, that's got to mean something. So I swung over to it, as I'm going towards it, all these 60 and 70 kilo yellowfin blew up. He'd seen them first, we got in, and of course we got there right on it, and they blew up on the lures, and we caught the biggest fish of the tournament. And I claim that 100% because I just kept searching and searching and searching. Not all the crew were doing it, I might add. Some were asleep, some had been on the beers, but this is it. Are you here for a good time or are you here to catch fish? If you're here to catch fish, you've got to take it seriously and you've got to be searching. Get all those electronics going, but don't rely on them solely. Be up searching, constantly looking for anything that might give you a chance. Anything out there, whether it be a spray of souries, a patch of slimies, Gannets dropping in, some, you know, albatross figure eighting, whatever it is that could be anything, a sunfish in the water, pilot whales, something that might show you just that little bit of a hint where the fish are. Number 10, we're finally there. We've been rocking and rolling, we've been lurching around, but at least we're doing it real. We're out here trolling, doing it marking fish, just caught an albacore while we're doing it. I haven't seen a yellowfin yet or bluefin, but we're still going strong. And do you know what? That one last vital thing that's essential that we all do is appreciate what we've got. There is nothing wrong with taking a tuna home and eating it, you know, or a dolphin fish, you know, bycatch, wahoo, it doesn't matter. 
but we've got to look after it. If you're going to keep it, bleed it, gut it, gill it, and get it on ice so that it's absolutely primo conditions for when you get home. And if you don't want it, let them go. We don't have to kill every tuna we catch. I love eating tuna, but if we catch a yellowfin today, we'll let it go. And if you catch a couple, keep a couple and let the rest go. Make an effort to tag them, put it in, and the yeah, so we can learn. Hopefully this year, we'll be teaming up with tuna champions and this year or next year, you know, soon, hopefully, and be putting satellite tags into yellowfin. How good will that be to learn what they're doing? Because fishermen play a vital role in research and science and learning these fish. And by putting tags in for New South Wales fisheries or helping tuna champions, we're doing our bit. So every time we go fishing, we'll keep catching fish. So there you have it. There are 10 tips, they're impromptu, that we pretty much just, well, I admit it, I just did them off the top of my head. But hopefully they'll help you catch more fish. But tell us if you've got any other tips. Comment below and add your tips to it. Let's share these tips for what we can do for catching more fish and doing it right and of course letting them go as well. Little tricks of the trade that'll help you and maybe stabilise our boat a bit we're rocking a roller. Like, look at it. Lurch is calm and it's just this lumpy old sea. But this is the whole thing that we're doing with YouTube is we're trying to, I keep looking at the sounder because that's what you do. I'm telling myself to do it. Is that we keep looking. Sorry, now I'm distracted with it. So the important thing is a bit of bait, look at that, there's a bit of bait there. You can see the bait come up and that's what I saw. And I'm like, oh, oh there's bait there. So keep looking and let's share everything we're doing so that we can help each other catch more fish. But remember, respect our ocean, look after it and take home a tuna to eat, not a problem at all. But make sure we let some go for the future as well.